opportunity to talk to the team about some issues. I want to share some facts about our village and correct some of the false um, things that has been said about us. The village has 200 to 200 people, um, people at any time. The vast majority are local people. And well over half are native Hawaiians. Many work and have children. Most of us had tried shelters and temporary housing, often several times and were placed back on the street once their time was up. Um, usually after the 90 days, many no longer have faith in the a, in a shelters that help. So we pull together and support each other. The village is a safe and stable place to live. Parents can go work, kids can att attend school, without having to switch, um, switch schools every time. Our village um, resident graduated a couple of years ago, summa cum laude. Yeah. Um, the village... Every resident is expected to perform hours of community service each month. We often prepare food, serve, and serve our houseless communities out there. Um, as far as why you want to why, uh, why power, to share some of the things that we have blessed, been blessed with. We will be blamed for crimes, vandalism, and trash dumping in the area. Sometimes house people are the responsibility. Other times it's houseless people who have been forced into our area by sweeps. Elsewhere, it's often myself and leaders of the village who do call HPD tribes and who works with each people to find and identify uh, perpetrators. We have always been open to collaborating with the state. We offer the we offered um, to lease the land we asked to help to find new location. We offered to have our water meter and paid for. We bought a marine biologist to come in and to teach us about the Opai We offer we offered to get our own dumpsters. and haul away, haul away our own trash. We had our own portal party which planned to obtain more in, in each um, in each case the state stopped us, but we are still open to working with the state. We work hard to solve our own problems without being burdened to taxpayers or to our community. Our village works like an ohana and it is built on aloha. Many of our residents have the terrible trauma in their lives. The feeling of Ohana is what enables a many to heal and thrive. It takes keikis to grow healthy and happy, despite not having a home. This kind of Ohana cannot be re replicated in shelters or a temporary housing assignment. I would like to take this opportunity to address some of the falsehoods that have been appeared in recent media report. Um, our village is not great. Several years ago, we had more than 300 people in our village. The state told us to reduce our numbers and has fluctu uh, fluctuated anywhere from 170 to 80 for the past several years. Sweeps of other areas, both in town and along Waianae Coast, have been resulted in have resulted in more people coming for us to help. For help, sorry. But we have done our best to keep our numbers done as instructed by the state. Nobody from the village is taking human waste and dumping it into Pokai Bay. Pokai Bay is a far walk from Wainai Boat Harbor. Nobody is walking down Farrington with their buckets and waste and pouring them into the bay. We make use of the public restrooms at the harbor. One of our residents turns her recycles into by toilet papers to put in the public restroom at the boat harbor. The soap is the bath um, the soaps in the bathrooms are often the hygiene soaps that comes from our village, from our donations, which we put in there by our village residents. Nobody put in feces into our opai hula holes. As I had mentioned, we have done our best to protect our opai hula holes by clearing, making, um, uh, creating boundaries and cleaning degrees. We have asked Dylan or if there is a biologist that will come out to, to the village to teach how to better care and maintain those homes. Um, they said our village is unsafe for the biologists to visit. Um, 
um, they said our village is, sorry, sorry guys, it's unsafe for a biologist to visit. Yet we have the elementary through high school students come for work days and we host schools of uh, workers from Salvation Army who stays for a month or so every year. We found our own marine biologists who help teach us and to take care of our opaihula. They claim our village piles, trash, and others have to clean it up. That is untrue. Every few months we have a major cleanup where we have roll-off bins donated which comes in and help us haul away our public trash at no cost to the state or the taxpayers. We also do daily trash runs to the Wainai Convenience Center for a regular, a regular daily trash. Finally, they say we are responsible for spiking up the water bill. Our residents count has been stable for the past year. So it's hard to understand how we, we could be responsible for a sudden jump in the water bill. We want to be treated as people, not problems. We don't want we don't want to be swept with only a few day notice. We want a dialogue with people making decisions about our future. We want to keep our ohana together as much as possible. We are open to exploring all options, including new location. We want to share some solutions. We've come up to help others, houseless our people, and to the state. Aloha kako, okay, ala keia. Um, Kalamai, it's so early, but I'm putting out the kahea because um, there are a bunch of cops coming down to Wailua. I don't know if you can hear me, but a uh, bunch of cops coming down to Wailua. They're blocking the road. We need as many people as possible to come and hold them accountable. Um, please come out and record video uh, and make sure that everybody um, sees what happens down there in Wailua. Again, uh, this is the Kahea. Please come out. Um, please come help us because they're bringing in a lot of cops and I'm pretty sure it's to come eject us. So, mahalo nui, mahalo nui. Share this, post it, um, get your ohana down here. Mahalo nui, aloha. Aloha my kako, it's Ke'ala. Um, I'm in my hale right now. Uh, gotta take everything out and leave what I can't carry in my own car um, because they're only giving us the amount of time that we can carry all our stuff and what we can carry with us. So I'm gonna be leaving my mirror, my couch, my table, my bed. I gotta leave everything in my hale because I can't carry it on my back and um, they're pushing us out to leave, even though they don't have an official ejectment. It's really f***ed up. They sent a people over to hurry me along to make sure I can get all my stuff quickly. And I told them straight, I need to get all my shit out. Um, so I'm still doing that, trying to decide what's important to me and what's not important to me. And like this short amount of time, I'm going to have to leave the holoholona billy goat because I can't carry them in my car. They said they might send them to the Humane Society and we can get them back if they have the proper identification. A goat and pigs don't have identification and there are animals that belong here that aren't just pets, but they belong to this place. So I don't know what's gonna happen to them. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what's happening. They're forcing us to leave and uh, Tyler Green has graciously allowed us to go in and get our stuff, um, even though this is completely out of the blue, and how am I supposed to grab everything that I have and fit it all in my car? Clearly I can't, so um, yeah, just so you guys know the hevel that's happening here, uh, have to move out, and um, it's so calm uh, that the state is exercising their power and siding with Coco Palm Tui LOC, who are like doing so much hevel. So, anyway, I gotta go before they catch me. Hello. I need to see Paula Paula. 
I have paperwork from the Attorney General saying that Judge Sung ruling is still pending. So I don't know what's going on here. Tomorrow we have court set with Judge Sung with his attorneys. Um, tomorrow we have court. I got to focus on court. But like I said, we have received a letter from the Attorney General, Russell Suzuki, that Judge Sung's order and um, is still pending and not final. So Judge Sung ruling was intervened by the Attorney General. So I need to find out who's in charge here and I need paperwork. No, we only we only going by the court order the Judge Sung issued that day. So you guys, so Attorney General, you guys not, not notified on Atter Russell Suzuki intervening? No. Okay, I'm gonna go, go grab the letter. Uncle, okay. I'll be right back. I think that's my hair. Yeah, it is my hair. Then I have a female officer in this van with my ladies. I love you guys. I love you guys. The action is pending. No final order or judgment has yet been entered. If the ejectment action is still pending and still no final order has been made, I don't know how this can happen. To me, I have nothing against Uncle Guys over here, Uncle Ed Gomes, Uncle over here. Okay, I'm finishing. For me, I don't want nothing personal against them. I don't like nobody feel any towards way to them. It's not their fault. They just following orders. The guys they following orders from. We're coming for you. Just know. We're not coming for our our Ohana over here who just following orders. I'm going for the neck. You see him? United States Marshal. Military occupation. We are at war. Our kingdom is alive, people. We are alive. Stop stealing them. Our white kingdom, no treaty of annexation. None. No treaty. This is illegal. We are prisoners of war. Prisoners of war, guys! Yeah? <laughs> The Kia'i who are there now, the ancestral um, uh, claimants to the, the, the Ohana lands that yes. are there. What do you think of the work that they've been doing? I think they are amazing. They've come so far with no money and no very little support. I'm very, very proud of Kamu, Noah, and Keala, and Jessica, and Chuck, and Uncle Roy, and all of our Kia'i that have been holding the space in Wailua. And you know, there is a misconception that these people are like freeloading and you know, just having a good time over there. In reality, it's very, very expensive to occupy, to live in a tent. It costs more money to live in a tent and you know, just live your daily life. You've got to bring in water, you got to bring in ice. It's very, very expensive. Plus they're working hard on the land too. They're clearing the land. They've made, done an amazing job of clearing out all the trash that you know, has been left there. Um, unfortunately, the waterways are really polluted. It's really bad. But this group of people are really amazing because with very little support, they've managed to be there all this time and really, make a dent in the mess and actually turn it around start planting taro and I'm very very proud of our Ohana very proud what do you think the state of Hawaii should be doing right now they should be protecting these people who are protecting our Aina they should be backing us up they should be 
you know, holding this Coco Palms Hui accountable to do a Section 106 and to do an EPA, and instead they're being green lighted by the state of Hawaii. And as usual, they're gangsters. The state of Hawaii, fake state, real assholes, bunch of gangsters. It seems like they didn't even follow proper process in Nothing. this. There was no Section 106, no EPA. Um, there are endangered species in the area too, right? Yes. Yes. And it's going to get worse. I mean, if they build that hotel, it's going to take out the whole Ahupua'a of Wailua. People think there are going to be jobs. I went to their meetings. They're offering the service jobs the cleaning jobs, the landscaping jobs, the parking the car jobs. No no high level jobs, management jobs will be offered to any of us local people from the community. They'll bring all their own people in and we will be the servants, park their cars, clean their rooms, scrub their toilets as usual. That's not, you know, that's not offering jobs. When I attended their meeting, they said there would be a, around 400 new jobs but only 25% of that would be offered to the community. Well, they're, they're, I mean, they're offering 175, or no, 172 um, applicants, potentially, from the EB-5 program, right? Mm -hmm. Which is right. a um, foreign Which is investment. so scary, so scary. These people can throw down some money, get a green card, and become residents of the island of Kauai. And unfortunately, we have our infrastructure is just not supporting this. They, you know, bring all these people over, build this hotel. We're really going to be screwed. Wailua is just going to be screwed. We need to keep this hotel out of Wailua, get rid of the Hyatt, boycott Hyatt. And Tyler Green, you're a gangster. This is not over. So the people from, you're a person in the Kauai community. Do you think that the the people of Kauai are concerned or should be concerned about the idea that these um, foreign nationals are coming in and could displace people from housing or potentially bring in drug influences? I think that uh, our community is very concerned, but it's like at breakneck speed going on. We have so many new people moving on island. There's nowhere to live. The latest uh, development, housing development, our duplexes that start in the high 400,000s. So community of Kauai, get ready because we have a new population coming. And for all you gangsters in government, guess whose jobs they're coming for? Not mine, but this new population got a lot of money. And uh, those of us that are emptying the trash and cleaning the floors, where are we supposed to live? You know, they're not thinking it through Laulani. They're just after the money, as usual, and we're not going to let that hotel be built. This is not over. We're going to protect Wailua Nui Ahuano. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing that doesn't seem to quite make sense, is that the, it, it seems to me, now correct me if I'm wrong, but on the island of Kauai, the Ka Kauai is small, and so... Are they really thinking that they will, I mean, are, are the Kauai people going to forget about this and allow for those tourists who would potentially stay there to just go on their merry way and forget that any of this happened? I think our community is very paralyzed. We sit in traffic for hours because they keep bringing all these rental cars over, the new population, the new transplants. Everyone's got a car. And so we sit in traffic for hours. Many, many days you can't go in the ocean in Wailua because of the fecal matter that's seeping out from the very old septic and leach system, the sewage treatment plant that's right there on the ocean. And that corridor, that light at the so-called Coco Palms will back the traffic up 10 miles at times during the day. In New York, you take people around and tell them history, right? Yep. And you've been kind of scoping out how that's done around here. Do you feel like an accurate history is being shared with the tour eye who come through here? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm seeing 
I walk around Waikiki, I walk around Honolulu, and I just see these tour buses going by, and I'm trying to listen to these tour guides. Can't really listen to them because they're driving at the same time, but from what I can make out, you know, it's just general garbage, you know. Blah, 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 blah. This is the Ilani Palace, blah, blah. They don't talk about the overthrow. They don't talk about overdevelopment. They don't talk about how things used to be and how they were changed into something totally, entirely new. Whereas a lot of tour guides that I know back in New York, myself included, do that. So, yeah, um, tour guides really got to up their game here in, in Honolulu and Hawaii to tell the real story. There's a lot of this idea that uh, creating more hotel jobs is good for the economy and especially, you know, the, those like uh, Filipino workers sure. over in Kauai and things yeah. like that. And I just kind of wondering because yeah. uh, it seems to me like there might be some issues with that yeah. in this case. Sure. Um, and I can speak to that. I worked uh, when I lived on Kauai. I worked at um, Kiahuna and I worked at Kauai Surf and um, at one point in time I, I worked at Princeville. And basically, and I was in my 20s then, but the job that I had was to um, pick weeds out in, in the landscape and stuff, or to be washing dishes and stuff. And that's not really good. You know, it just kind of keeps you subjugated. And it's not the path to liberation if, you, if, you're, if that's in, of any interest to you. Um, you know, I don't think that people um, should be exploited. You know, with very low wages and, and, and we're living in the most isolated landmass in the world and uh, with very high cost of living. And the people that come here, you know, multinational corporations that profit off of our labor, that sucks, you know, and that really sucks. And, and you know, they steal the land or whatever, to not have respect for the genealogical ties that the people have, you know, like the people in Wailua to, to the land. I mean, it's their land. I mean, you know, I mean, like I, like, I, like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know all the fine little details, but, but I know what's up as far as how the game's played and, and stuff, you know? And here's the guy who called the demonstration making a nada sign over here. Okay, he's kind of engrossed in this, so we will, um, we will see what he has to say in a little bit. I'm sure we'll hear all about this in a moment. And whatever it is, we can say that Governor EJ we've done the wrong thing. I mean, seriously. Well, Governor EJ can do the right thing. He has the power to stop the cocoa palms from desecrating a very super sacred and historic place at Wailua. He already has the power to overrule a Kauai Historic Preservation Commission who had to give approval for the permits. That's what, there was, that's what John Waihe'e did when Honokahua was desecrated. That's what Waihe, that Governor Ige can make a difference. Okay? So he can override. He has the authority to override the the historic preservation review commission that comes from the time of the territory that has the authority. The state historic preservation division is just an infiltrating business about moving the bones. That's all that they care about. But the Kauai Historic Preservation Commission is responsible is responsible and their determination no matter what it's been I believe it should be overridden by the governor he has the power already by the stroke of his pen he can stop the project until it can be determined to what degree the desecration has already occurred for the hundreds of bones that are sitting in the back of Wailua and all of the artifacts and EV that are underneath the tennis courts. Right now, I know what's happening on Kauai. They got black, uh, trying to block it off to stop people from seeing what they're gonna do. Well, that's what's happening. Somebody should take a drone 
and get if they're doing the construction there they are again desecrating one of the most sacred places within the Polynesian Triangle it's genocide it's ethnocide it's it's a destruction of the culture to build a hotel there is to defile the sacredness of it to defile the sacredness and commit genocide it's a war crime that's what happens I think the governor ought to be concerned and the state ought to be concerned of the Coco Palms hiring militia sheriffs people dressed in the uniforms of the state of Hawaii but I don't think they were paid by the state of Hawaii because if they were paid by the state of Hawaii they would not have come there because those mars those people impersonating law enforcement came there without a warrant there is no court order and from what we determined yesterday <coughs> judge soon who made that ruling in a court that doesn't have jurisdiction has left Kauai, perhaps left Hawaii, and is now a fugitive from justice. People gotta pay attention. I hope they're covering the court case that's going on right now on Kauai, because the real news is about the state of Hawaii failing, you know, being a party to this desecration. You know, it's not all about business. Jobs are important, but desecrating a sacred place and destroying the, 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 the potentials of restoring the economic viability of Wailua and the sacredness and having the people there. If anybody's going to have a hotel, it should be for the Hawaiian homeless. That's what's going on. War crimes. Right here. War crimes. War crimes. We are occupied under the force of a gun and all you have to do is look at Auntie Deborah's video of what happened yesterday to see how far they will go to keep the people down. But you know what? The people are not staying down and I'm calling on all of the people out there to stand for peace and stand for peace Standing for peace at this moment means kue. It means resistance. Because that is the only way that we will reclaim Pono.